Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and what is this? Actual content? What a weird world we live in! I'm here today to bring you my Dragoonity decklist for Post Rising Rampage, August 2019 format. We have Romulus, we have Tempest, two things I did not think we were ever going to have in 2019, and boy do I have a lot of theory that I pumped into this deck, and I still have more theories that I want to test. But, this is a Dragoonity decklist that has been long overdue. It's been uh, something I wanted to do for the past, you know, couple weeks. I had my hands on a Romulus at Sneak Peek, uh, so I could have made this video, but I was just busy and then, like, casually testing other things and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but basically, getting back on the content grind starting with this video, so if you're interested in seeing more content about this deck or like this about other decks, I would implore you to hit the subscribe button. If you are new here, I'd love to show you more stuff. And definitely check out the channel if you want to see more videos that I've done. Other than that, basically I'm going to be showing you this deck list. It is very high in terms of what a rogue deck can do. It's a very powerful rogue deck, but it's still pretty low on the competitive spectrum. I probably would only play this deck at a locals or a small regionals. I would not play this at a larger event because it is, while powerful, also fragile. And that's sort of the problems Dragoonies have had, like, historically. Uh, even with all the new cards that they have access to, and the amount of extenders and consistency cards that I'm playing in this version of the deck to try and make it as streamlined and no-nonsense and just do everything the same every single game as possible, the deck is still kind of fragile, which is a bit of a problem. But anyway, if you guys want to watch some gameplay of this deck, I will be live-streaming later tonight. I live-stream four times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday on my Twitch page, Phoenix Live, which is in the description down below. If you want to go and follow the stream, get notified when I go live later today. If you're watching this video the day it goes up, I will be playing a lot of Dragoonities, a lot of this deck list, tonight on stream. So if you want to come into the stream, check out some uh, gameplay, talk theory, ask questions, all that sort of stuff, then I implore you to do so. And also, like I said, you can invite yourself to the Discord server with the link in the description as well to talk Yu-Gi-Oh! with me and other people as well. But anyway, deck list! Three copies of Dragoonity Center. This is the main normal summon of the deck. It is a starter that does not require a Dragon Ravine. Uh, it's just strictly better than Ducks in every single way because it allows you to equip from deck to it instead of equipping from Grave. Um, if this card gets negated, the deck is built around Extenders to make this card's resolution not really matter so much. But basically the big powerful thing that this deck can do is that it can two card combo into a board of three interruptions, two negates, and one bounce that is a non-targeting bounce. And that non-targeting bounce being Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres, which summons Goliath from deck after it bounces, so it locks your opponent out of the extra deck. So essentially, your opponent's always going to be playing against two Negates and a Goliath, and they had to play through a bounce in the process, uh, off of two-card combos. And that's what is the big strength that this deck gained from Romulus being imported. Previously, all of this deck's baseline combos were three-card combos, and only the best combos were four-card and some very specific three-card combos, depending on what the cards were. But now everything as far as the baseline combo for the deck is just resolve Sinidus discarding a tuner, so a two card combo. And then like the baseline combo is also just if you don't resolve Sinidus, summon any three monsters in your deck. And if you do resolve Sinidus, every single card in your deck that's an extender turns into your best combo. Whereas previously before Romulus, you only had specific extenders that made combos your best combos. So like this deck got a lot better with Romulus. Like it's very understated how much better this deck got as far as a functionality-wise with Romulus, but triple Sinidus because we want to open it. One copy of Zephyros and one copy of Garuda the Wind Spirit. Uh, Garuda is just uh, actually a good extender now. I actually want to play more of this card, but like it's very odd as far as an extender goes. Uh, I wouldn't play more than two of it at most, but I'm liking it at one right now. Uh, typically, you add this card off of Gaederg and then discard something like Tempest out of your hand to banish Tempest for Garuda and get the search. And Zephyros is one of because this entire deck is built on Dragon Extenders to get to Romulus. You can't really build the deck reliably around like Ravine uh, Zephyros interactions anymore because Ravine is at the lowest quantity that we've ever had it before in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. We've never had only five copies of Ravine that don't require normal summons or, you know, cards you can access immediately. Obviously, there's cards like Metaverse and Demise of the Land and stuff, but like, those aren't cards we can utilize. We only have three Ravine, one Terraforming, and one Set Rotation, so we only have effectively five Ravines, which is the lowest amount we've ever been allowed to play, so you can't really build the deck around Ravine Zephyros anymore. And it's just accessed later in the combo anyway, uh, So like, and it's better to use later in the combo rather than just starting with Ravine Zephyros. So that is why uh, we are only playing one, even though it is, in theory, a very good starter slash extender. 
Uh, it's just something that you want to use later and have those slots relegated to other extenders. Now for tuners, three copies of Dragoonity Phalanx, three copies of Dragoonity Coos, and then three copies of Destrudo. We are playing nine cards of Constance targets. Uh, we are trying to resolve cards of Constance as much as possible. We are trying to increase the deck's consistency as much as possible. And Destrudo is like the go-to discard for cards of Constance now. If you have cards of Constance plus a Dragoonity tuner and Destrudo in your hand, you're always going to discard Destrudo first because this isn't like we're playing Ducks. This isn't like previous Dragoonity decks where you could discard the Dragoonity tuner and immediately get it back with Ducks. We're not playing Ducks because that card's not very good in a deck built like this. It's not very good as a starter. Where now you need Dragoonity cards to discard for Sinidus. And if you drew Sinidus off of the cards of Consonance, now all of a sudden you've discarded your Dragoonity card that you could have discarded for free value and you have a Destrudo in your hand that's not doing anything with your Sinidus. Whereas if you discard Destrudo for Ravine or Cards of Constance, it's an immediate plus one because you can use it as soon as you summon any monster. So it can be a starting extender or an extender later down the line, depending on how you have to play through your opponent's stuff. Uh, and overall, I cannot say enough good things about Destrudo. It's an extender no matter where it is. It's, a, it's an extender in your hand, in your graveyard. It's, it's perfect. The only thing that could, this card could be better with is if it was named Dragoonity Distrito. That is the only way this card could be better in the deck. 100% love this card. Paying half your life is not relevant because you're going to be never going into time with this deck anyway. Because this, game, this, this deck wins and loses its games very quickly. It's very clear cut. There's no grind game with this deck at all. You are going to be winning or losing your games super fast. And if you minimize how to do the combos and you are able to play your combos fast and effectively, you will never be going into time unless your opponent is hard slow playing you, in which case you were destined to go into time no matter what deck you were playing with or without Destrudo because you're letting your opponent hard cheat you. Uh, so, like, that's just that. This card could not say enough good things about it. It increases the consistency of cards of consonants, gives you another plus one to discard off Dragon Ravine to recoup value, all that sort of stuff. Very good. But, continuing on with that same theory, we have two copies of Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. We're not playing Gate Zero because we don't really need it because the main purpose of this card is to be discarded off of Dragon Ravine or sent with Foolish. We're not playing Dragon Shrine in this deck because we lack the room, we lack the space, uh, whereas you could play it in other versions, but I'm trying to keep the deck very slim, so instead of playing cards like Dragon Shrine, I'm playing like less than 40 cards because I'm playing Upstart, whereas you could replace Upstart with Dragon Shrine, maybe play two Dragon Shrines and play 41 or whatever. But you also have to make room for the Gate Zero, which is another brick, which is something I just don't want to play. The main deal is that discarding Dark Worm for Dragon Ravine is in the same vein as Destrudo, a raw plus one, which is stuff you need to have access to in this deck. Like, you want to be able to put as many monsters on the board as economically as possible. Sinidus does it. Dark Worm being discarded for Ravine does it. Destrudo being discarded for Ravine or Cards of Constance does it. Like, you want to be playing a lot with resources that are cards that replace themselves. So if you discard Dark Worm for Ravine, adding a card, even if Ravine gets, like, Ogred or Ashed, like, you still get the Dark Worm back, which means it negates that hand trap effectively because you're still at the same number of cards overall. And even if you were playing Gate Zero, you'd be going plus in card advantage, but Gate Zero doesn't really do anything for the deck. Uh, like I said, if we were playing cards like Dragon Shrine or Foolish, you could probably make a point towards gate zero because then it's a card you could discard for ravine because it was a plus one that you got that you can just discard for ravine for free uh, but mainly the main point of this is that i wanted to minimize bricks but also have cards that worked with ravine as good as possible for the combo and that's what dark worm and uh, destrudo are here for so like you can just discard this for ravine at Senatus, try to resolve uh, summon this back try to resolve Senatus by normal summoning it if the Senatus gets negated you have a dark worm and Senatus on board still so you can just go straight into Romulus, and then you just need one more extender to play. And, like, this was free, because you discarded it for Ravine and then got it back. Uh, so, like, it's just, it's theory like that, that this deck is built around. It's just trying to be as nice as possible. But, carrying on. Three copies of Dragoonie Arma Mistleton. Uh, again, this deck is built around Resolving Senatus plus Tuner for the discard to be a two-card combo. Or, if that gets negated, or if you don't draw into Senatus, you just need any three monsters in your deck with at least one of them being a level 4 lower dragon, which Destrudo makes itself a level 4 lower dragon. You have Dark Worm and all that sort of stuff. You have your Dragoonity Tuners, all that sort of stuff. 
like Dragoonity Tuner plus two Missile Tins is full combo without Sinidus if you don't get hand trapped because that's three monsters. You make the Missile Tins into Romulus, you have the Tuner left over, you get Divine Lance, play it. You have Phalanx and Coos, which you go LP, Pisty with. Uh, like, this is just fantastic as far as an extender goes. It allows you to make Borderload Savage Dragon in a lot of your combos a lot easier while you can still make it with other means. It's just something that just. It, it extends your combo very well. Uh, it's very good at playing through interactions. Uh, because, like, you can, like, play through a bunch of your opponent's interactions and then special this from your hand, equip Coos, make Ascalon in a simplified game state, which is usually game-ending. Um, it's, it's very interesting. Like, this card is very good. It's searchable off Tempest. It's searchable off Gold Sark for Tempest. It's searchable. Um, it's searchable, but you still want to draw as many of it as possible. It's a Dragoonity card, which means you can discard it for Senatus if you have to. Uh, like, can't say enough good things about this card. We're trying to play as many extenders as possible. But anyway... Carrying on, one copy of Tempest, Dragon Ruler of Storms. Uh, this card's fantastic for the deck. You Gold Sark this to search for a tuner for cards of consonants or Sinidus, or you just search for Mistleton to be an extender. If you draw Red Med, you can summon this out of your deck off LP and then banish it to summon Red Med from your hand, and then that summons a Mistleton. If you draw this, you can use a Gator combo to add Garuda, then discard this, and then special Garuda search Mistleton by banishing the Tempest. This card has fantastic synergy with the deck overall. Uh, we were definitely always going to be playing this, but we're not playing the Baby Dragon Ruler because you never summon it. One copy of Darkness Metal. This is obvious. This card is very good for the combo. We're not playing Leviton anymore because it's not necessary. It's very redundant. We played Leviton in the past because we needed every combo to be a three-card combo that worked. But now we don't need every combo to be a three-card combo that works, and we don't need to have four monsters going into our Guard Dragon play. We only need three. So we don't need the Leviton to be summoned off the back half of the combo. Red Med is just a superior option. And then the last monster in the deck is our Blowout Win Condition card, Amorphage Goliath. You summon this off the Hieratic Seal uh, most of the time. Sometimes you do draw it off Saryuja and then you just keep it and special it so it's already on the board so your opponent has a deal with it just being huge as well. Um, things that you can do, like little bits of variance that uh, affect gameplay. Uh, but like mostly it's a summoned off Seal. Your opponent should be playing against two negates at minimum, sometimes three, more often than not three, with the way the deck is built, and then they have to deal with a bounce that summons Goliath, and the Goliath is protected from being killed in battle by Titanic Galaxy, so, like, very strong. But that is the last monster. This is 22, if I remember correctly. Onto the spells, playing three copies of Dragon Ravine, and we are playing the Terraforming, the Set Rotation, and the Oracle of Zephyr. This could be Gateway to Chaos. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The variance of you getting to this offset rotation is already very low. And then the variance of you being playing against an, a Zephyr Pendulum deck is also astronomically low. You have to have drawn set rotation, set this against a Zephyr Pendulum deck. And even then, they're still not going to be able to play if you resolve your combo. Because, like, sure, they flip this because you gave it to them for free. You suck it up with one of your free Titanic Galaxy negates. And then they still have to play through two negates, a bounce, and Goliath that they can't kill. Uh, so, like, it's it doesn't really matter, but you could swap this for Gateway to Chaos. The variance of you uh, drawing these two cards together is uh, a 1.3% probability. Uh, so you should never be drawing these cards together. If you draw Oracle of Zephyra, it sucks, but, like, usually your hand is just combo anyway without it because this deck is built to have very few dead cards. The only way that you could have a brick hand with Oracle of Zephyra is if you draw Oracle of Zephyra and a lot of redundancy. Uh, like cards that you wouldn't be able to play immediately, like multiples of Destrudos with no ways to offload them or things like that. Uh, you just have to take the chance. You have to take the risk. We're trying to get to Dragon Ravine as much as possible, which is why I want to play the set rotation. You could cut these two cards for Dragon Shrines to make better use of the Dark Worm and the Destrudo, but you have to make room for Gate Zero, and Gate Zero is a brick just like Oracle of Zephyr is. Um, so like it, it's just like you're actually increasing your chance of drawing Gate Zero with a card that it's most it's supposed to work with because you could draw gate zero with a lot more cards like dragon shrine foolish and like dark worm and ravine and stuff like that whereas set rotation is a one is is one card you're never going to draw oracle of zephyra uh and have this card together like you're never going to whereas like if you had more set rotations uh the probability goes up if that if that makes sense if that sentence i just said makes sense to you then congratulations you understand a lot more fundamental theory than you probably think you do. But we're just trying to play five ravines. Uh, I tested the, the uh, Dragon Shrines in this build and I didn't really like them, so I swapped them out for the Set Rotation and Oracle of Zephyra, because I'm trying to get to uh, Sinidus as much as possible. Three copies of Cards of Consonants. We're trying to discard our Tuners, our Distrudos. We're trying to draw into cards, get to Sinidus. We're trying to get to Ravine. We're trying to get to all these things. 
this card, fantastic. Uh, one copy of Upstart Goblin, additional consistency. Basically, 39 card deck. Uh, that's that's how we're trying to do. We're trying to increase the percentages of opening everything else. Uh, one copy of Dragoonie Divine Lance. Uh, this card is not very good to open anymore, and you just search it off Romulus anyway. It's sort of a brick, even though it is a Dragoonie card. If you're discarding it off Sinidus, it kind of sucks, because you can't really utilize it. Whereas, like, if you were discarding Mistleton or a Tuner, that's a card you could utilize at some point in the combo sequence. Uh, so you just want one. You never want to draw it. Uh, you just want to add it off Romulus if you did open it. Uh, then you just add Ravine off Romulus, so you're not really losing anything. It's not even like a Garnet, but like you just don't want to open it. And you don't want to have multiples of it either, because that makes your hands like start to become unplayable. One copy of Gold Sark, Banish the Tempest. Pretty standard. One copy of Foolish. Uh, this card is actually pretty versatile, because you can start your combo. Uh, and if your combo gets interrupted, where you need an extra extender, you can Foolish for Destrudo and use that. But if your combo doesn't get interrupted, you can use Foolish to send either Tempest or Zephyros, and then combo with that in a different way. Uh, making your Gator be able to do a little bit different things, like add Garuda and Banish Tempest. Or if you uh, sent uh, uh, Zephyros, then you can just uh, change the Gator step. Different things for different people. One copy of World Legacy Guard Dragon, one copy of Monster Reborn. Uh, just these Reborn cards, I did not want to play multiples of Guard Dragon, because while it is an extender that you can use in theory immediately, uh, it's not that great to open multiples again i just don't want to open multiples of these cards uh that are like hard once per turns but like if i open reborn and guard dragon together i'm okay with that um and reborn is just reborn so you're obviously going to play that uh but that's like just like the the base level like theory of what i have i don't want as many cards as possible to be bricks when i have a lot of like redundant monsters i could be drawing but at least those are usable in some form whereas the redundant spells and traps are not really that usable but anyway, last three cards in the list are three called by the grave. Pretty standard, pretty simple, not really much to go on with there. But for the extra deck, one copy of Dragoonie Knight Romulus. This card's fantastic, definitely needed, makes the deck infinitely better. Definitely play one of it, insane. Uh, one copy of LP, one copy of Pistia, one copy of Agrapane. Yes, in fact, we are going to be abusing the most broken dragon cards uh, legal in the format. Uh, arguably, either LP or Agrapane should be banned. Pistia is fine. But all three of these things together are way too broken. Like, this is probably fine, and this is definitely fine with this band, or this band. Uh, like, but all three of them together, not good. <laughs> not good for the game at all. In any way, shape, or form. But then, Twin Triangle Dragon, uh, you use this card to revive your Barka. Uh, at the end of the combo because you're going to use one Barka to revive all your tokens and then the first Barka you used at the start of the combo gets revived by this. Make Titanic Galaxy with that. One copy of Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. This is what you end on, obviously. And then one copy of Saryuja Skull Dread. This is an extender that cleans up your Guard Dragon uh, portion of the combo to let you do other things. Uh, also, you get to draw cards with it, which is nice. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, one copy of number 38 Titanic Galaxy. Uh, this card is used to protect Goliath and negate a spell, obviously. Uh, pretty important. Uh, two copies of Dragoon Knight Barka. Uh, this is definitely a card you have to play two of because you start the combo with Barka equipping two tuners off of the center of this play, the base level center of this play, and then you summon second Barka at the uh, at the very end of the combo and it equips three tuners. So this card is casually soul charge uh, that lives in your extra deck, so that's nice, uh, but you definitely want to be utilizing it in that way. Uh, one copy of Adriana, you can step up into Ascalon with it, you can step up into Borlode Savage with it. Uh, it makes uh, Garuda into a very good extender at the beginning and end of your combo because you can go into this uh, and like it turns Garuda into a level 6 because you'll be able to step up into Vajrayana like the old days, equip Phalanx and Special it, make Borlode Savage. Pretty nice. One copy of Dragoon Knight Gatorg, this is a core combo piece, you're going to add and discard Zephyros with it 99% of the time, but sometimes you will have access to Zephyros through other means, and you will be adding Garuda with this to extend the combo in a different way. And then we're going to be playing one copy of Borload Savage Dragon, and one copy of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. These are your other two negates that you end on with Titanic Galaxy. So your ending board, most of your games, is Titanic Galaxy, Crystal Wing, and Borload Savage Dragon with a Hieratic Seal up as well. Uh, these are all very strong, obviously. Crystal Wing is very good as well because it means like you're going to be able to negate like danger effects and stuff no matter where they are. Savage is not only negate, this is a spell negate. Uh, it's it's weird because it's like, it's sort of like two negates when you have all three of these out because it's a monster negate, so it's very specific. It's a spell negate, so it's super specific. And then one omni negate. 
So, like, this is the only one that's, like, actually, like, super oppressive in terms of, like, what it negates. And the other two could be sort of played around, depending on what your opponent's deck is. But, I mean, they're still all very strong, and they're all very oppressive because of how large they are. And the fact that this deck is abusing Red Med, which means that if they are removed from the board, they, like, can come back. Like, the Titanic Galaxy and the Crystal Wing get to come back. So does the Savage Dragon, although it will not be negating anything anymore, but it's still a big body that comes back. So, I mean, like, just things to consider. And then the last and 15th extra deck card is Dragoon Knight Ascalon. This could have been another combo piece, but the deck functions well enough with the 14 extra deck cards before it, them being combo pieces. And you need a card that is very good in simplified game states. Um, like, Savage Dragon is arguably that as well. Uh, but sometimes you are playing against your opponent, you are throwing your cards into interactions that they have, whether it be hand traps or physical cards, and the, you get down to a point where they have a couple of monsters and they have nothing else. They've used a lot of their interactions on you. You can either make Savage Dragon, but if they have a board of a lot of monsters, you could just clear those with Ascalon, which is a huge floater, and then you could use that to lead into further plays. It's very hard for your opponent to deal with this card after you've just cleared their board with it of monsters, especially considering the way that it clears uh, monsters means that it, like, it gets around a lot of problematic things of like can't be destroyed by card effects or when they hit the graveyard, do X, because this banishes the cards. Um, so like you're usually able to get into this after you've simplified the game state down and dealt with all their interactions, and then this is a huge 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 floater that's also monster removal every turn that it's left up already cleared the board if it was allowed to resolve and like it's just really hard for your opponent to deal with so i couldn't find a 15th extra deck slot that did as much as this card did for what the deck needed in order to function so that is why it's here like there are games that i've won strictly off the back of ascalon <laughs> being just as big as it is and as oppressive as it is in a simplified game state so like that's that's why it's here but that is the gist of the deck uh that is the main and uh extra a side deck would be just be something very generic like you'd be playing like triple evenly triple red reboot triple twin twister just cards that allow you to play uh you can't really get away with playing cards like uh severe mode in this deck because you really do require your normal summon uh but basically that is the deck list. If you liked it or if you have any questions or whatever, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, if you are new here, be sure to subscribe. If you want to see gameplay with this deck, make sure you tune into the stream, which will be happening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. I will be playing Dragoonities for a large portion of that stream. Uh, if you want to ask questions, that would be one of the best times to do so, as well as if you want to see how the deck plays, that would be a very good way for you to see that as well i think this list is pretty solid i'm a big fan of how it performs and if you have any questions like i said comment down below or if you want to talk more in depth about it discord will probably be the better place for you invite link is there as well and the twitch link for my stream that'll be later today is in the description as well twitch.tv slash phoenix live but anyway thank you so much for watching sorry this video is a bit long but i go a bit in depth with theory with this deck because it is my favorite archetype in the game's history and has been for eight years and uh yeah that's basically it. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video, which will be sooner rather than later.